shadows, bound for the gallows. A dead man walking, so love came calling. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Six feet under. Happy Sunday. My name is Lindsay. This is Aria, Elliot, and we hope you are having an amazing Sunday, an amazing week. We've got a special announcement coming to you this week. Our church is participating in our community back to school drive. So if you can do your part and <laughs> drop something off, let's hope they go back to school. Um, we don't, we don't know, but I think that that would be a really great idea, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you can do your part and pick <laughs> up glue sticks, erasers, back to school snacks, anything that you think would be helpful for communities or little children for back to school, <laughs> that would be so greatly I'm appreciated. Going grade one. Grade one. She's I'm going not to kindergarten for another year. Well, yeah, I'm not. Grade she's not going in. Um, she's not going into grade. Um, she's not going into my school until until I'm in grade two. That's right. So if you can pick up your back to school supplies <laughs> and drop them off on the Emily Street uh, entrance way, you'll see blue bins there. You can drop off all your donations there. That would be so greatly appreciated. And with that being said, we pass it over to Rebecca to do an update. On Rebecca. the rock carrot. Say bye, everybody. Bye. bye. Have a good week. <laughs> Have a good week. Hi, everyone. So nice to see you here today. I just wanted to give you a quick update on the rock carrot. As you know, when we started six years ago, the rock carrot was uh, an initiative to provide employment for amazingly talented individuals in our church congregation who struggle with disabilities and mental illness um, and barriers to the to the traditional work environment. When COVID hit, uh, it was a dramatic change for all of us and our st staff were off for a period of time. Um, one of the staff told me a story really early on in that process. She told me that her rent is 950 a month and the stipend that she receives from the government is 1150 a month. And so she was very concerned about keeping her job at the Raw Carrot, um, knowing that the $200 a month is not a lot to live on and just being really concerned that she could get back to work. Our staff were off cooking for a month, but um, we sent out an appeal to many of you. And due to the amazing generosity of the church, we raised a lot of money that was able to go to the raw carrot and enable our staff to continue cooking. So we're so thankful for your support and the staff have been back in cooking in the church for the last few months. We are busy this summer getting ready to initiate an online store and curbside pickup. You are welcome to shop online and pick up soup now throughout the summer or into the fall. And we look forward to being in person with you soon. I'm just here for a few years passing through Oh. 
heaven is home. Streets of gold and endless nights, the presence of a God lives with us forever. No more tears, no more nights will come and sing to God. to leave our trail of hope so the world will know heaven is home heaven is home streets of gold and endless nights the prayer Singing glory, 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 worthy, 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 holy, holy, holy. Glory, 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 worthy, 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 holy, holy, holy. Singing glory, 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 worthy, 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 holy, holy. Sings my soul, my Savior, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior, to Thee. How great Thou art! How
jumping online with us again this week. Uh, maybe you've been watching for a number of weeks or perhaps just for a few, or maybe this is your very first time with us. Uh, this week we are continuing our series that is going to take us through the entire summer. And it's a series where we're going to continually come back to the same question. And the question is this, what does it look like to follow Jesus? And, and for me, the, the key word in all of this is the word follow for, for two reasons. One is when you start to look at the example of Jesus, as soon as people become interested in him, the invitation that he often gives is come and follow me. It, it really speaks to the reality of ultimately what Jesus wants to begin is this relationship, this, this life that is lived with him. More than just simply, you know, believe these truths and then go back and live your life or just understand more and more. It's, it's come and believe in me. Come and follow me. Come and live life with me. That's the first reason. The second reason is I love the word follow because it speaks to me of action. It, it speaks to the reality of, of how we are called to live all of life with him. And so what, what excites me about this series and about this, this idea of what does it look like to follow Jesus is that it meets everyone wherever they are at. And so if you've been someone who has believed in Jesus a long time, if you have followed him for a long time, if you think of that image of following, there's always this next step. Sometimes one of the dangers we fall into as Christians is our faith may become static. Our faith becomes too normal or comfortable. Hopefully this series invites us to take that next step with him as the Holy Spirit kind of works in and through our lives. For others, you may be at a different place. Some of you may be at a place of still exploring who this Jesus is. Maybe someone has shared this link with you and you're starting to become more interested. This is a series that is going to help you understand more and more about what it looks like to follow Jesus. That, that even if you're not at the place of, of fully yet believing in him, you can come to an understanding of, of ultimately what Jesus wants for you as he wants for me, as he wants for everyone, is that we would choose to follow him. And so the question you may be asking is, well, what does this look like? And so over the course of the summer, we're going to go back to this teaching of Jesus. One of the most 
comprehensive teachings of him that happens very early on in his ministry, often referred to as the Sermon on the Mount. It comes at a time where Jesus has just begun teaching in the local communities. He's begun healing the sick. He's begun performing other miracles. And there's a growing interest in him. And so what does Jesus do? He brings his followers that were with him then, kind of sits them down on a hillside, and begins to talk to them about what it means to follow him. And so that's where we're going to continually turn. This week, we're going to look specifically at the question of, should our faith in Jesus make a difference in the lives of others? Maybe you land at a place of thinking, yeah, of course, of course my faith in Jesus is going to make a difference in, in my life. But have you ever taken it that next step and begun to ask, should what I believe, should my faith in him really make a difference in the lives of others? You know, sometimes I I think we may fall into the trap of a faith bubble. You know, there's been lots of talk about bubbles, about social bubbles, about opening up our bubbles, about allowing other people into our bubble. And so think of that image for a moment and think about faith. I think sometimes we get distracted because we we, we occupy ourselves in a faith bubble. We, We know that faith is personal, but we also try to keep it private. And we can do this for different reasons. One reason is, you know, we may not want to come across too strong. Maybe you've been on the other side of a follower of Jesus that has just come across too strong, has, has been way too much, way too soon, way too often, and you kind of pull back and think, I don't want that to be me. And so I'm going to stay in my faith bubble. I'm, I'm going to believe in Jesus, and I'm going to show up to, to other Christian events, but I'm not going to allow it to kind of leak out into my everyday living, you know, like when I'm with my neighbors or, you know, when I'm at work or in whatever scenario. That may be one challenge. Or maybe another challenge is the reason you stay in your faith bubble is you you do believe that faith can make a difference in the lives of others. You just don't think that your faith can. You, You look in the Bible and you see other individuals who do incredible things. Or maybe you, you look in the community or you, you read stories of, of people who are doing incredible things and you think, well, that's, that's wonderful and that's amazing, but that couldn't be me. And so you stay in your faith bubble. And your faith is really about your relationship with God, but you don't see how it can have an impact on others. What does Jesus have to say about this? Does he want us to keep our faith private? Is it good enough that we just stay in relationship with him? That 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 we really shouldn't be too concerned about seeing if our faith in Jesus makes a difference with others? Let's turn back to the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 5, we're going to begin at verse 13. Just going to read three verses this week. But Jesus uses two images for us to help us unpack this question. And so it begins in verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by others. You are the light of the world, A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. What Jesus often does when he is teaching is he uses images to to help us understand an even greater truth. And in this particular case, Jesus uses two, in many ways, timeless images to, to help us unpack this question of, should my faith in him 
make a difference in the lives of others. The images are that of salt and light. You notice that Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Now when you think about salt and light, the key learning that I have is that both of them actually exist for the benefit of something else. Think of it this way. This is your typical run-of-the-mill salt grinder. But, but salt in and of itself doesn't really have a great purpose. That salt is actually used for the benefit of something else. I mean, have you ever kind of wondered around mealtime, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hungry, I'd like something good to eat, and so I'm just going to grind myself up some salt, and uh, that's going to be awesome. Salt on its own leaves not a great taste in your mouth. But if you ever had a meal, and you take the first bite, and you think, this is good, but it needs a little something. And then you think, hey, pass the salt. And by simply adding some salt, it adds incredible flavor to the food. I mean, think of all the great snack foods out there. You know, peanuts, popcorn, french fries. I don't think anyone can argue that they're good, but with salt, they are that much better. You know, salt exists for the benefit of bringing something that is good and making it even better. Then Jesus talks about light, about how we are the light of the world. Have you ever gone camping and you're sitting around the campfire and you decide it's kind of time to go back to your tent, except you don't have a light? And so, you ask someone for a light, and yet they don't give it to you. And so now you're, you're, you're stumbling along. You're, 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 you're kind of unable to find where you're going. You're kind of worried about what is around the next corner. If only someone would give you a light, how much better that would be. That you could begin to see your way forward. I think Jesus is using two images that for me really bring home the same truth. That our lives, that our faith when we choose to follow him, cannot be limited simply to us and Jesus, but rather we begin to view our lives as an opportunity, almost as an expectation, to make a difference in the lives of others. Have you ever thought of how your life can be used by God to bring about a greater flavor in someone else's life. Jesus ends with these words when he says, You are the light of the world, and so let your light shine so that others may see your good deeds and praise your heavenly Father. You see, Jesus wants to live out our faith in intentional ways. Not just simply for the benefit of others, but that in serving others, in, in looking at, at ways that we can benefit others, that it will then begin to open up opportunities for them to see the reality of God in their life. So what does this teach us? I think the first lesson is that faith, although personal, should never be private. It should not be our goal to simply create a, a faith bubble, to, to simply think, well, this is my relationship with God and not really worry too much about how it impacts others. Jesus says it's, it, it's crazy if you have a light and you just cover it. You, you don't do that. You want to live in a way that benefits others. You, you, you want to live in a way that you're even willing to make sacrifice for the benefit of others. And so faith needs to never be private. It needs to be intentional. And for some, that, that may be a bit of a challenge. You may think, well, I, I kind of like this faith bubble, but maybe this is the next step. 
to begin to see ways in which you can impact others. The second thing, though, is to understand that our faith can have an impact both positively and negatively. Have you ever put too much salt on food? If it gets to the point where the flavor is gone and there's now suddenly a bad taste in your mouth. Or have you ever been camping and you ask someone you know, to, to give you a light to, to help you see where you're going? And instead of them actually shining it in the place you need it, they shine it right in your eyes. Totally obnoxious, totally annoying, might be slightly funny for them, but not for you. I think we need to be careful that as followers of Jesus, that when we think about letting our light shine, are we of benefit to others? Not about coming down heavy-handed, not about bringing upon criticism and judgment, but looking at how we can benefit those around us. You may be wondering why we have the, the four Paris on the screen or the four Paris on my shirt. For us as a church, this is the most condensed version of what we are all about. Call it our purpose. Call it our, our mission. As a church, our focus is on leading people to Jesus because we believe that he is the one who brings hope and meaning and abundance. Our hope is that more and more people will begin to follow him. And so how do we do that? By keeping our faith private? By trying to create a nice faith bubble? Absolutely not. By reminding ourselves that we are for Paris, that that we exist for the benefit of others. Earlier on, you heard Rebecca sharing the story of the raw carrot, an incredible ministry that not only provides meaningful employment, but, but brings benefit into the lives of others because they are followers of Jesus. And this was a step of faith that they were willing to take. Back in June, you may have heard us talking about the food drive. It was amazing to see that when churches and community groups came together, that we were able to raise over 18,000 pounds of food, over $2,500 for a local food bank. That was a huge benefit to others. But you know what it also did? It creates a space where people become curious about God. It's an act that actually fulfills this passage. Let your light shine so that others may see your good deeds and and not praise us, but praise God. When you heard Lindsay earlier speaking about our back to school supplies, here is yet another opportunity for us to benefit people in our community. Not so people can say, hey, look at that church, look how amazing they are but that they will begin to see the reality of God at work in our lives and through our lives. And that is why we are for Paris. Last year for the back to school supplies, we we partnered with the county. And I had the privilege of dropping off all of the supplies that many of you gave. And it was amazing when I pulled up to the county office and I, I walked into the office and asked them kind of where they wanted me to put it. See, they had no idea that I had a truck full of supplies ready to deliver. And they thought, well, just just kind of drop it over there. And I was like, "I, I don't think there's enough room. Next thing you know, about three or four other county workers were coming out and helping us hand bomb in all these boxes of supplies to help people in our community that we will likely never meet. Why do we do that? Because we are called by Jesus to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. And that is why as a church, we want to be for Paris. But it doesn't mean that we only wait for the next initiative of the church. We can be so organic with this, of how we live out our faith in regular daily ways, in ways so that others will see our lives and we'll begin to wonder more about God. 
There's this great verse from Peter. Peter would have been one of those that was sitting on this hillside with Jesus. When Jesus spoke these words, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And after years of spending time with Jesus, after years of then helping build the early church, these are the words that Peter then spoke, speaks to the next generation of Jesus followers. In 1 Peter 3, 15, he says this, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope you have. That's an amazing statement of Peter because it reminds us that, that we should be living in a way that people take notice. We should be living in a way that, that people start to become inquisitive about why we live how we live. And then Peter says, tell them for the reason. I think we need not to be shy as to why we do what we do. This past week, I, I had a, just an off-the-cuff conversation with, with a friend of mine, an elder of the church, Ryan. He's one of the guys who's done the announcements the last couple of weeks. And he was sharing a story of how a conversation came up, I guess you could say, out of the blue. But it was a conversation where he was able to share the reality of not only our church, but of God at work. You know, I could tell you the story, but I think it'd be better if you heard it from Ryan. Hi, I'd like to share with you an experience I recently had a few days ago. I was in Cambridge with my two daughters. I was taking them out for lunch. And as we were waiting for our food to be prepared, the gentleman on the opposite side of the counter turns, he looks at me and he says, hey, I've seen that shirt around town and I know about your church. From there, we began to have a short conversation where I shared a bit more about the life and the works of our church. It was really nice. You know, we don't often know how what we do influences others, sometimes in small ways, sometimes in ways that are larger. But what we do know is that when we go out and we work on behalf of others, there will be a positive outcome. I love that about our church, and that's what I shared. I love that we are a church with the people that gather in order to scatter. I love that we're a church about going out and doing things on behalf of others in our community. I love that we're a church with people who are for Paris. And so that's, that's amazing to hear that story from Ryan. But that can be a reality for all of us, that when we begin to live out our faith, that when we begin to see how we are called to be the salt of the earth, the, the light of the world. That our lives, our, our faith, is not just simply about the difference that Jesus can make in us, but how did the difference that Jesus can make through us. So, where do we go uh, from here? Uh, for those of you that perhaps are still exploring who Jesus is, my hope is that you'll continue to join us. Continue to see how a life lived with Jesus following him is more than just believe these truths. It becomes more about live this life with him. For those of us that are followers of Jesus, how can we this week be intentional? Be intentional about adding flavor to people's lives for the sake of Jesus, to be intentional, to be specific. One way that comes to mind is good old social media. I know many of you are on different media handles, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it might be. What are we posting? Is it posts of encouragement? Is it posts of celebration? Is it posts where when people would see what we are putting out there, it would draw people closer to Jesus? Because we have an opportunity. What if this week 
we were intentional about putting some posts out there that brought encouragement to others. One thing you could do is jump on the church's Facebook page and, and share the post of the back to school supplies. Get other people on board. Begin to see ways that we can practically and intentionally make a difference in this community. Because people will notice. Some of you may be thinking, all right, I guess I get this week off because I'm not on social media. <laughs> not so quick. You see, we all have a sphere of influence. We, we all have, a, I guess, a bubble right now. Let me ask you, what are you doing this week to add flavor in the lives of others? What if you use this week as a chance to step back and say, are my actions drawing me closer to Jesus? And are my actions providing the space to draw others closer to Jesus as well? What about in your family, with your spouse, with your kids, in front of your parents, with your colleagues, with your friends, with your neighbors? Are you living in a way that benefits others? There's a couple of mental hooks for you. I'm sure at some point you're going to have to turn on the lights this week. At some point you may even say, hey, pass the salt. May that become a reminder for all of us to recognize that faith is to be lived. Faith is to be intentional. Faith is to make a difference. Thanks for jumping on with us this week. My hope is that you'll join us again next week as we continue through this teachings of Jesus and understand how we can live life following him. I'm going to pray and then uh, Wanda's going to conclude us with uh, a song that in many ways reminds us yet again of how we are the light of the world. So don't hide your light. Let your light shine. Let's pray. Jesus, as we think of all that you have done for us, we are so grateful for your love. We are so grateful for the benefit that we experience through your life, your death, your resurrection. But I pray, Jesus, that we would not make the mistake of keeping our faith private, but that we would live in a way that brings benefit to others, that we live in a way that creates opportunities for people to become curious about you. I pray for us this week, that not only would we live this way, but that when people ask, as Peter said, we'd be willing to speak with courage the hope that we have in you. Not in an overbearing way, but in a way that speaks truth and life. Allow us to be the light of this world. Amen. The dark it comes to blow out all your light. <sighs> Doesn't want you telling everybody that Jesus rules all right. Let your light shine. Whoa, let your light shine. Whoa, let your light shine and let Jesus shine.
shine And you're not scared You're gonna let your light shine And we're not scared We're gonna let our light shine Cause Jesus is Lord And he's gonna let his light shine Let your light shine